5G mobile system was implemented in 2020 using millimeter wave band. 6G mobile system was planned to work in the terahertz band from 0.1 terahertz up to 10 terahertz, and it was expected to be system was in 2010. 6G will be at the artificial intelligence base. Here we, we follow the, the law of 10 year cycle law in mobile industry. We can see that after the 4G, there is the base station size will become smaller and smaller and with the 6G. It means that after the 4G, cell size decreasing and the frequency band will increase. Here we have a comparison between the 5G and 6G specification. The peak data rate in 5G it's in gigabit risk 20. For the 6G, the it will reach G uh, 1,000 gigabit per second. About latent scale, that means 10, we have 1, we have point for the 1. 6G, it will reach G uh, 1,000 gigabit per second. Automatic vehicles, we have 1, we have technology 1. Starting with the partial, but for the 6G, it will be sorry. Automatic vehicles, technology Starting with the partial, but for the G, it will be sorry. Automatic technology, starting with the partial. Artificial intelligence will be used partially in 5G. It will be fully. Satellite integration under development, it will be followed. It means to artificial integrate the satellite with the terrestrial uh, communication. It will be fully. Satellite integration. Under development, it will be followed. Some prospective application of the satellite with the will be the super communication and the super, intelli uh, super intelligent society. Smart homes will become a reality. There will be also the extended reality will be based on uh, 6G because we have a literal low latency, a literal latency and extremely stable wireless connectivity. Autonomous systems, it means the self-driving will be supported by uh, including LIDAR, GPS, solar, and radar. It means the plane computer wireless interaction. It means the LIDAR, GPS, we receive the signals from the brain and process it on the computer to get a certain signal from the brain. And smart health hearing, uh, the, 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 we talk about the remote surgery and the massive amount of medical data. Space air integrated network, this will be connect the system of the terahertz with the air and with the uh, space. There will be, uh, for the air, uh, for the air there will be uh, uh, UAV uh, system and for the Yes, we have a constellation of satellite lights, like uh, uh, yellow, uh, for different uh, orbits and for different uh, altitudes. Uh, uh, and for the, yes, we have a constellation of satellite lights, like uh, yellow, uh, for different uh, orbits and for different altitudes. Terrace band. Terrace band, uh, if you look here, we have the terrace band. It's between the millimeter wave, which is for 5G, and the infrared. Okay? If you look here, we have the terrace band. We have here evaluated, depending on the atmospheric charge, we have evaluated this band. This green uh, region, this is uh, high uh, attenuated by the atmosphere due to water vapor resistance. Uh, other, uh, it's a good frequency. Uh, when we add this and this, is as we get 1405 for gigahertz available for the. 6G. Uh, 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 the the we see that this band is acceptable as atmospheric attenuation. Uh, 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 and it's used for 6G mobile system. It's uh, 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 by researcher. Here we have a severe atmospheric 
this is the application for short range of mobile short range indoor and for military application. We have also atmospheric risk by researcher. This band are accepted. A license it is for the ISM system. Last one is this band. It means for global global Wi-Fi. Now a Wi-Fi will be what is two point gigahertz or five gigahertz. But in the future, global global Wi-Fi. 32.5 gigahertz. Where this slide just talk about the electromagnetic wave radiation. Where the radiation is divided into ionized radiation and ionized radiation. For the non-ionized ionized radiation, it's the 5G and the 6G band. For the ionization band, when we talk about X-ray and gamma ray. The ionized radiation has sufficient energy to release electrons from the atom. So there will be harm affecting the damaging the tissue or the DNA. Otherwise, the non-ionizing for 5G or 6G, there is no sufficient energy to release electrons or to make ionization because we use 0.5 to 12.4 millivolts, but for ionization we need 12 electrons. We need 12 electro electron volts. Uh, this all uh, radiation is we need uh, defined by the WHS, INC, ICR, and FFC. Uh, this all uh, radiation is we need six defined by main challenges. We have two challenges: atmospheric absorption and three space. Here we have taken the first subject in the free space pathos. The free space pathos defined by the equations, where in the equations the FSC is the carrier frequency and D is the distance between transmitter and receiver. Here we draw two curves. One is for the 5G because now the 5G is worked actually on the 28 gigahertz. Otherwise the 6G they plan to go around 800 gigahertz. Measure this or take reference at point one or 100 meter. Why 100 meter? Because the radius of the 6G it will be around 100 meter. We find that the difference is 29. Right radius of the 6G for the 6G we need more one than this by 28 29 dB and this need a high gain antenna or array antenna to be to be used in the 6G position station to to compensate this difference now for the atmospheric effect we have this the well known atmospheric attenuation it's dB per kilometer with a frequency now if we look to this part it's the 40 and then in this part we have about 1000 dB so this this and this this it will be used for short range application or for military application sorry for the secure communication not military secure communication because the range of obligation is not more military some application. Otherwise, if you care for, for this band, we have 200 uh, dB. 200 dB per kilometer, but we use just, we have one meter. If you divide this, we have 20 dB, and this 20 dB can be compensated by using high gain antenna. We have one meter. If you divide this, here we have 20 dB. Now, when we go to the rain attenuation, we have this the famous chart which uh, shows that the rain attenuation dB per kilometer with frequency for different rain rates. Now, if we talk about 50, it is high uh, rain rate, a high rain high rate frequency for different 50 rain meter per hour. Now, if we talk about 50 from one. Uh, from 100 gigahertz up to 
for different carriers. Uh, we have this becomes constant. Okay. Uh, uh, we are you sure with that it's become constant. The, uh, we have uh, this but if we uh, we can see that we have just okay. 20 dB, 20 dB per kilometer, but we have one meter. So at the end we have just two dB per uh, 100. So we in terahertz the rain effect uh, the rain effect is uh, not uh, two dB. Uh, Last slide, 100. we can so talk we about conclusion. Conclusion, the 6 we G will be uh, uploaded at 2030. 6 G is not just faster than 5 system system, but it's fully artificial to intelligence phasing. Propagation is not loose and atmospheric to represent the main challenges for the terahertz band. Uh, we have uh, the band of frequency from under gigahertz up to gigahertz will be allocated for the 6G mobile system. Also, the 6G mobile system, we have a good band available. It will be about 450 for gigahertz. Hertz. Also, the 6G mobile system, Thank you. we have a good band available to be about 450 for Giga Hertz. Also, the 6G mobile system, we have a good band available to be about 450 for Giga Hertz. Also, the 6G mobile system, we have a good band available to be about 450 for Giga This slide. This slide? Okay. Okay. You, you're good presentation. I was for uh, this information. Okay. You can check that uh, the frequency is 800 mega. And we are talking about 800 uh, eight was for, giga, uh, this information. Yeah. So you can check the difference between uh, this the frequency you. is 800 mega. Uh, the figure under uh, that one. Yes. Uh, what what eight is the difference? Yeah. We, we are making here 800 megahertz, yes. but the figure under we are considered that the nominal frequency for the giga is 900 giga, not yes. we are making here 800 what is the difference between yes. you are mentioned about two frequencies? The, the, the nominal frequency for the more than is 900 gig, not yes. dB. And this gain what is the difference the high you are mentioned about two frequencies? The, the antenna to be implemented in the 6G station. And this gain what is the difference? So I, I mentioned for that the unit of the frequency in the lower. This major at 6G, 100 meter. Why 100 meters? This is the propagation of that frequency because not going to be propagated more. 100 meters. This is for the free space part. Yeah. Just Why 100 meters? Not the atmosphere. Mm. This is the propagation of that frequency because not going to be propagated more. Just right. This is for the free space part. Just Why 100 meters? Not the atmosphere. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, any other question, please? Just Right. Okay. For the free space package, okay. just uh, okay. the uh, Any other question, please? Not the same speed. 6G is more faster than 5G. It is not just more faster. It is advanced technology. It is I artificial intelligence based system. There will be the intelligence in the 6G. In the 5G, just a star. Uh, just start, uh, just start. The development will be the intelligent 5G, starting by AI, but it will be not uh, fully. Uh, last question, please, it's because we don't have time. AI, yeah. but it will be not uh, fully. Uh, last question, please, it's because we don't have time. AI, yeah. but it will be not uh, fully. Since uh, the uh, last question, please. Um, because we don't have time. I, I, yes. Since uh, the the laws is the patient uh, system. Since uh, the the laws is the uh, yeah multiple system of antennas. Since, uh, the the solution. 
uh, even in the five Jewish who actually work, we have the same problem. But this is less than 20 dB from this 6G. The first uh, thing, even they the use small cell. Work, we have in the, the 5G, they, right. the first but time they go to the TV small cell from this. The radius first of the 5G is 200 meters. In the 5G, the first time they go to the As we are increasing the frequency, in the 6G, the radius of the base station will be shorter. Which is here and here beside us. It will be 100 meters to to, uh, to compensate this loss. Besides that, due to the atmospheric attenuation and the path loss, we need a high technology, a high technology like uh, antenna, antenna, high gain array antenna. We need the technologies out of the scope of our paper. The technology of 6G now it is not existing. They just start working on the technology of the 6G. For example, now the researcher, when he needs to design an antenna for 300 gigahertz, they make the theoretical calculation on 300. But when they implement this antenna, they make step down. They design an antenna of 30 gigahertz. Because 30 gigahertz now, it's in the band of 5G. All the equipment of design. But if you now design antenna to 30, 100 gigahertz, the equipment, because it's very miniaturized, there is no system. So uh, this will be available after some years. They are starting work working on the very miniaturized. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Doctor. They are starting working on the very miniaturized. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Doctor. The next presenter uh, title is a compact circularly polarized side uh, depth antenna with wide band characteristics for sub 6 gigahertz uh, application. Uh, this is supposed to be presented by uh, with wide band characteristics uh, for Dr. Mu'tez. Uh, this is supposed to be presented by Mu'tez. Uh, in uh, advanced RF and microwave research group, uh, School of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. In, uh, advanced Jahur, RF Malaysia. and microwave research okay. group, uh, School of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Bismillah. Engineering, University Technology, Good morning. Malaysia. Good uh, morning. Uh, uh, I am Dr. Mataz Al Mishahi. Research follower, expert in 5G beam forming in low frequency and high frequency in University of Technology of Malaysia. Follower, expert in 5G Today I will present a simple technique about compact circular polarized antenna using SIW technology, substrate integrated waveguide to achieve a wide band character for sub 6 gigahertz. Sub 6 gigahertz is another form of lower 5G band. To achieve a wide band character for sub 6 gigahertz. Sub 6 gigahertz is another form of lower 5G band. To achieve a wide band character for sub 6 gigahertz. Sub 6 gigahertz is another form of lower 5G band. To achieve a wide band character for sub 6 gigahertz. Okay, through the presentation outline, we will see the research background, getting through the challenges facing the research, and the objective okay, the presentation outline, uh, behind or reflected to the problem statement, beside the, the literature review, facing and the methodology the used to design the antenna, the beside the result behind as a simulation and experimental the measurement, beside and then we'll have the conclusion review, and the future. And the methodology research. used to design so the first of all, what is the 5G generation requirement? What are the 5G requirements? This is a big question. Like, even now it's implemented in some countries, even now it's already operated. But until now they still debate what is the 5G requirement? Like, some, some of researchers, they say, bandwidth operated. Okay, bandwidth that means we need a higher bandwidth, which is lead to higher capacity. 
which is lead to higher traffic. Okay. Bandwidth, that means we need... This is due to the shortage capacity. Where? In the 4G. Which is lead to higher capacity. Some researchers conclude that we need high directional gain in the 5G. Some of... And that's due to overcome the path loss and other losses, including interference. Path loss in the 5G. And millimeter wave, and that's usually in lower to overcome the frequencies, path loss, this path loss can be uh, path loss, a low loss state of art. That's based on the technology you are using, microstrip, you are using SIW, you are using waveguide, or you are using top planner, or whatever planner or non-planner technology. So overall, when guide, you look to the 5G requirements, this is we're talking about from the point of view of antenna or beam forming or devices. Look to the 5G so we will have the most three important things: from the higher bandwidth, higher direct gain, or higher gain, and low loss, including the size loss, because size considered a physical loss. Higher gain, you have. Big size antenna, big size antenna, or, or even uh, big size big Now in Malaysia, they propose big size antenna, two or three band of frequency. Lower band, mid band, and high band. Lower band is less than one gig, which is now already eliminated by MCMC. So now they are focusing on the mid band, sub six gigahertz. Which, which is, is targeted for mobile applications. MC, MC. Lower band. And so now the they are third band is the millimeter the band. 26, 28, which is and before was 38. But MC, because MC. of the rain attuation, the higher rain attuation in Malaysia, so they also cancel 38. So now they are working on 26 and 28. So what's that mean? That's mean when you want to build your physical layer of 5G, you need to start with the single. So what's that mean? Which is the that's mean when you want to build your physical layer. Now let's go to the propagation a little bit. Okay, this is a simple sector. Your physical layer. Now uh, let's organized. go to the four sectors and eight sectors. Okay. And actually, this is based on uh, using uh, frequency reuse, one of the technologies or one of the techniques, sorry, used in the uh, propagation. And actually, this is based on we have using one sector and then or one of the techniques, sorry, used in the uh, propagation. And actually, this is based on we have using one sector okay. and then. So it's like we have, uh, sorry, one cell and four sector, and then usually in infrastructure or in industrial, okay. we divided the sector to four so cells. Like so usually uh, one cell and four, sector, four sectors and antenna, then which is really four antenna array to cover the full system. The sector to four so then when we, 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 we use another frequency, then we will double and overlap the beam, so we will have eight sectors. In 5G, they think about then when another we thing. We, we will okay, use another let's design an antenna, can radiate two beams. In 5G, they think about then when another we thing. We, we will okay, we use another let's design an antenna, can radiate two beams. In 5G, they think about then when another thing. Okay, let's design an antenna, can radiate two beams. In 5G, they think about then when another thing. Okay, let's design an antenna, can radiate two beams. Okay. So again, we start thinking to do, okay, let's do circular, uh, sorry, let's do an antenna. This okay. antenna can give me two so beams again, we start or three beams, beams. Okay, let's or can give me circular, circular polarized. Uh, so I can do double the coverage, okay. and instead of can using four two, sectors, so four antenna sectors, okay. I can or use now can two antennas. Uh, so there is another debate, no, you can do a beam split, so one antenna give you four beams, or one antenna give you two, three beams. Using antenna integration, using metasurface, using metamaterial, a lot of technology. This is only on antenna side. We still not yet integrated to array, we still not yet integrated to beam forming, because beam forming is another talk. Only on antenna side. So 
the target now, okay, let's do circular polarize. Let's cover two sides. And then let's see what will happen. The target now, okay. And actually, this is from Hawaii. Haig is working in Hawaii as a planner engineer in 2019. I met him in Malaysia. They was having still a problem. How they would cover the cell sector inside the city using only high directional antenna. How they hey, so he, he proposed this technique, and just last year in Malaysia they implemented already that technique in success How they and very efficiently. Now, now I already talk about these challenges now, just now. So we go to the objective. So the main aim is to design a compact circular polarized antenna using SIW structure. So we go to the and objective. We have three objectives so related to each other. To design, to design a white band, it's number one, more than one using SIW. To design a white band, AR, because we have XR ratio is very important here, more than one white band, band, and to validate these uh, models by using experimental AR, uh, XR ratio is very important. So the scope of work, literature review will be based on the CP antenna. Design, we will uh, use the CST and uh, using uh, the planner uh, microstrip. Uh, sorry, so planner of work, uh, SIW. And Here is the wrong microstrip. Is SIW is combined between non and planner microstrip. Planner antenna. Fabrication measurement will be using chamfer room and combined. And performance analysis based on return loss or we call it in another uh, name, reflection, the uh, coefficient, gain, uh, AR, and radiation uh, pressure. And so this, there is ca current or uh, uh, up-to-date uh, CP antenna. Uh, coefficient, gain, AR, and you see we, they targeting 2.4, 2.4, 2.3.5 uh, here, uh, using slot antenna. Uh, uh, 5 uh, giga, 5 uh, giga, 3 giga, they are using slot, slot, slot antenna. And here they are using Rahimi, they use horn antenna. Actually, uh, horn antenna giga, five giga, uh, giga, cannot yeah, give uh, slot, slot, slot antenna antenna CP, point, but he managed to do CP. How he managed? managed antenna, uh, I still read in this paper, still I didn't finish it. Cannot give the... Now in the methodology, okay, the, our design specification for antenna, we need to design under sub-6 gigahertz, targeting 3.5. Okay, so we need 3.5 to be covered antenna. inside the sub. We need to design 6 gigahertz. And uh, S11, which is called retail loss, will be less than okay, minus so 10 dB. To be covered Gain for the single, the we want it more than 5 dB. For the bandwidth, uh, more than 1 gigahertz. For the, 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 the using uh, fabrication element, which is the cheapest one, the cheapest substrate of R4, using thickness 1.6 and the dielectric constant primitivity ER4.3. Now this is the antenna design, this is the structure of SIW, so we can see this is the metal part for the first layer and the ground layer and then inside here between the two layers is the substrate. Now the trick about SIW, they replace the waveguide wall with these bias, metal or air. But now usually now they are using wall, metal, metal cylinder. We call it vias. So when you see the waveguide, waveguide is like uh, a rectangular uh, shape. So this wall, we, we call it narrow wall. So when we you see the waveguide, waveguide is like. So what we achieve here? We achieve because uh, so this waveguide can be wide band. So when and wave for the antenna, it like can give high gain. So what we achieve here, but the we problem in the lower frequency is very big uh, size. So these wave wave can be because it depends on the so While microstrip, can give high you can compact, but the you can have more more efficiency in that. But the problem with microstrip, you can have common uh, problem uh, even in other uh, devices when we more design is uh, the narrow band. And sometimes the in the high frequency, uh, the low loss. Okay, uh, so device. this is the more, uh, 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 antenna design. I just want you to focus on uh, this one. Lawless. See, if you have waveguide okay. and uh, you so simulate the waveguide, you will have the same electrical field. Same like SI. So that is the tricky thing. 
Okay. Uh, so uh, this is parametric go. study Good. based on the, the design itself, but the, also so that is the, the diameter of the vias uh, and the spacing between each vias is very important because it will uh, give you which, uh, which resonate of the vias. Lower resonate, uh, spacing higher resonate. Resonate. I mean lower frequency very important because it will uh, within the 6 which, gig. Uh, which resonate? Of okay, this is the antenna lower optimization. Spacing uh, each I mean lower frequency very important. And now the result, this is the fabricated the six gig. model, front patch, ground plate, okay, the and here is the measurement process for uh, S11. Now the result, this is the fabricated Okay, we can see the model, the measure simulated, ground plate, okay, agreed well, or agreed fairly. Uh, yeah, there is some disappearance, okay, and this is basically based on the mismatch port, uh, low quality of the metal, low quality of, of R4. Yeah, Sometimes the student, they do, okay, and this is very common, while he is uh, making the measurement, he is holding the antenna in his hand, and that's, that's, and this that's not accurate, we should leave the antenna. Uh, making on the, the table or leave the antenna on the stand. When you, uh, especially when you do S11 and and measurement, that's because that's in the radiation pattern you are in the chamber, in the chamber, on the table or no problem. The antenna on the stand. When you, especially when you do uh, this is the measurement. Uh, here we can see there's two radiations in the chamber, in the chamber or two on beams, the table or no problem. The antenna on the stand. Dipole, when monopole, okay. But uh, this is the, the thing is, we, can see we need these two radiations or two beams, so we can cover two dipole, monopole, okay. uh, two sides of the antenna. The thing is, the gain here, okay, that's one of the fill. We have so fill. We, we need it more than five. Monopole, but with uh, the simulation the and the thing is with the measurement here, we have okay, maximum four. The we're at 4.5 gig. But, but the AR was good. And the thing is with the the here, Over the bandwidth, the AR is less than 3.5 gig. But now this is the comparison between simulated and measure and comparison with the related words. The AR is less than Our design is good in size reduction, 40%. It's very now wide, from two to five, compared to all the these. Our design is good in uh, size also for the AR, but our drawbacks is the gain, two to which five. we can compared solve it later by using it in array or by using it for the AR in a beam format. Our is so in conclusion, two we two achieve we solve it later uh, our objective, in wide array band or by for, using for the bandwidth, and a, beam a wide band for the AR, Compact so size, but we fail in the game. Uh, our objective in wide so band, for future work, we need to uh, integrate it to 4x4 four 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 array compact size, or integrate it with the 5G in the game. Uh, be informed to see the scan for, for these. Uh, uh, four four Thank you very much. I'm sorry uh, for the debate, and I'm ready for q and to see the scan uh, for these please, uh, two questions only. Thank you very much. I'm sorry uh, for the debate, and I'm ready yes, for q and To see the scan for these please, uh, two questions only. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry uh, for the debate, and I'm ready yes, for q and To see the scan for these two questions only. Thank you very much. I'm sorry uh, for the debate, and I'm ready yes, for q and To see the scan for these two Hello. If you return back to the so slide, yes. I think you need to make a, a balance, yes, yes. a balance, uh, balloon, mm. balance and balance back to the for your slide. system to yes. increase that efficiency of the antenna. I think you need mm -hmm. because to make normal a, things a balance, for the yes. uh, antenna like a uh, patch mm. antenna. The normal things are used that, uh, patch, that uh, patch and patch uh, balance uh, and unbalance balloon for like make a, a balance all the normal things uh, frequency that. Uh, okay. uh, you know that uh, we are designed uh, two to 18 gigahertz uh, like uh, your antenna. It was this a problem, but you know solved that it by design that uh, balloon uh, two circuit. To 18 okay. Gigahertz. Uh, basically, and that's also a debate between researchers. When you design a wide band or even ultra wide band, like from 2 to 18 gig, it's 
It's and ultra wide, I repeat. We will yes. have this problem. It's correct. That's also related to the current surface inside the substrate. So when you're using ballon, that's good. But we are building a system. We need this antenna data to be integrated inside the substrate with beam form. We are designing Butler matrix now, and we are designing a Nolan matrix. So when you will add a ballon, or even when you add meta material to it, Later, when you integrate it to Butler matrix, there will be a problem. So we will keep this for now. We will do a basic Butler matrix, two by two, which is coupler, a normal coupler. Then we see if we can add, and we make our bubbles right. Thank you. Which is coupler, a normal coupler. Another question. Then we see if we can add. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, sorry, uh, as I understand that your uh, work is pointed for 5G. Another question. Your work is pointed for 5G technology. We are my question is, my uh, question, uh, why are you working the 4G band? Your okay. work is Thank you, doctor. Uh, I will take uh, like two minutes to answer this. Is, why are you is working the Less than 4G two minutes. Okay. Um, okay. Your work is Thank doctor, you, doctor. Usually, uh, I will take... Uh, like two minutes to for licensing five this, this is based on ITU okay. and based on uh, IEEE. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor. Uh, the old for licensing the old technology. This is based on ITU. focusing on the band. So 4G band, working on 3.8. Up to six. Hello. Up to six. The old technology, but the with it, focusing on the band. 100 mega. So 200. 4G band, working for the intake. When they think about the 5G, they were not thinking about using sub-6. But because we cannot fabricate very, very small antenna 28, they allow to use the lower frequency, but they give you a condition. You cannot make 100 mega because you will have a distortion on that. They make it one giga and more. But that's why they started sub-6. Sub so the trick is, or the, or the debate is, about the bandwidth. Because you cannot design an antenna if your bandwidth is not one gig. So then it's, it will be normal. Or the debate is about the bandwidth. Okay. Welcome. Welcome, Doctor. Yes. What is the effect of AR in the design of shared frequency functions? Welcome, Doctor. You have shared frequency functions and with axial ratio should be one, right? But one. One to be circular, uh -huh. polarized. Should be one. Should be one. Right? Okay. If it is not, if it, uh, usually, practically speaking, you cannot get one. To be so what are you going to do? And what is the effect from your research? Okay. okay. The first thing, it's a new to think about the circular polarized using it, using it in 5G. Because 5G okay. mostly the they focusing thing, on direction. It's a new so, thing about the cellular But they want to have, because it's it designed for a mobile application, not for the base station application. So they want a purely but, uh, they want to direction. So you can receive and send in the same station. Because their idea, so they your phone will be base station. But his phone will be direct. base station. So you can receive so while you are walking and, and are connecting on lower 5G, you are already sending and receiving. That's why they are targeting now AI. So, so this is the it's most, this is one of the few work on the 5 uh, on the circle. That's why you see it's less than 3 so dB. And overall the bandwidth, usually when you have AR, you will have it on the 50 mega, 100 mega maximum. But when you have 3 gig, it's a huge. The effect uh, will be on that. You will be a big station. Okay? Welcome to gig. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. The effect uh, will be on that. You will be a big station. Okay? Welcome to gig. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. The effect... Uh, will be on. You will be a big station. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. The effect uh, will be on. You will be a big station. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. The effect will be on. Next uh, presenter, uh, the title is Design RF Front End Unit to Avoid. Intermodulation uh, by using Android 
units. Uh, this will be presented by Star, unit, uh, Mr. Aden Modellawi, by using and he Android is with unit, Jihad uh, This will be presented by Star, uh, Mr. Aden Modellawi, by using and he Android is. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, let me first thank uh, our university to give us uh, this chance to present our uh, papers. Uh, also, I have to thank my friends to help me to do that paper. My paper is concentrated about the intermodulation by using a new technology, which is Arduino uh, Kit. My paper is concentrated about the okay, we can uh, by using a new text starting for uh, introduction. The introduction number uh, normal things uh, contain about the definition okay, of the RF units. Uh, the RF units always for uh, uh, can be found in the front uh, of the receiver uh, system. And we know that the communication system contains transmitter and receiver. The front end unit is going to do three main objects, three main goals. The first goal is limit the bandwidth, protection, then control the level of the signal. Uh, we have a different things about what we're talking about today. This is the receiver is for the electronic wireframe, not like the radar or we have a different thing the about communication about system today. because we are now already the is for different the between like that two systems in electronic warfare we don't have any information about the signal about the, the frequency carrier between no uh, modulation, no uh, level, but any information uh, on the reverse side for the communication we are already estimated the frequency, the modulation, the all the information for that one. Uh, on the reverse side, for the communication, we are already uh, Also, we have uh, to add extra information about the, our receiver. It's going to work for the wide band, uh, starting from 8 giga and to 12.4 giga. So it's wide band. It's going to work for specialist wide band to receive the radar signal, airborne radar signal. Also, we have uh, 12.4 giga. In general, uh, the receiver, uh, the receiver can be contained the antenna units and the front end and uh, RF down converter. Uh, the receiver, the IF uh, stage, which is the processing, or maybe is the digital processing signal will be there. Okay. So that we are uh, put in our mind the front end to have protection to the RF down converter so that which we contain the mixers the mixer when it comes to reach the front end to have protection when can be the signal is coming higher power and that mixer can be generated under modulation harmonics and we're going to talk about this under modulation problem now and, the power and from where this can be generated so that the under modulation we have some reason and we have some uh, problem with that under modulation is coming from the signal save is, is the signal is coming high power and that keep the system going to shift it to the non-linear zone that non-linear zone going to produce uh, frequencies unwanted frequencies or false alarm we call that uh, maybe to and this will be the problem for the um, false information in the receiver maybe also can be generated instantaneously coming two signals to the our receiver because we are talking about the white band maybe frequencies can be so this one also can be generated coming to uh, enter modulation or generated harmonics well so cause that this false and generated this one uh, one extra things the temperature may be don't affect on the our linear zone for the our amplifier so can be shifted the dynamic range and put it for that uh, signal in the zone, uh, no linear zone, I'm going to produce anti modulation too. So this is uh, just the equation, general equation that's going to produce the anti modulation uh, can be produced if the two signal appears. 
in our receiver. So this is uh, just the question. In general, question our mind, uh, we put it in our mind, the uh, main uh, function for the front end is the protection unit, which is going to interrupt the path of the signal to avoid from the high power signal path to our receiver, which is going to power. Uh, also, we have uh, to keep the signal Bandwidth, uh, our bandwidth, so interesting only bandwidth, power only power going to receive that one. And uh, the amplifier, also we because we need to amplify our signal to increase our the certain level we are looking for. This is our problem now. Uh, the amplifier, and then we have to control to that level to keep it within range, the acceptable range for the our down, looking for. Uh, this is our frequency now. down converter. We have to control that level to keep it within range, the acceptable range for the hour down frequency down We have to control that level to keep it within range, the acceptable range for the hour down frequency down Sorry, I miss leading. We have to control that level to keep it within range, the acceptable range for the hour down frequency down Sorry, I miss leading. Okay, sorry for that. So this is the, our design in the complete way. So the first of them, we can see that the protection unit so this is, the, is going to our use design a single pole single way. through switch, so which is, has a quality, a very high response. We can see that the protection unit. This is the uh, then, uh, low noise amplifier. Switch, so then has a uh, directional camera on CD, which is a crystal detector with a video amplifier. Then the alarm circuit, which is controlled by our Arduino 2. Uh, then we have the filter. The filter is choosing from the uh, company produced the filter because not, not, we don't have ability to design such as this filter. This filter has a high order to keep our bandwidth limited with our interesting bandwidth only. We have the pre-amplifier also is selected from the microwave company and we assembly all that one. Uh, our problem in this research is how to control selected the uh, digital company variable attenuator by using the Arduino. Arduino, we know that. This is a new kit generated before five or six years only. So uh, after we measure that, the path losses, or the RF path losses, we get again, actually net gain, is the path losses with the setting minimum value of Attenuator is approximately 69.4 dB, and uh, for the setting for the digital variable attenuator, we can get only the net gain going to be changed to 22.9. If you are make a reverse calculation to minimum signal detection, we get approximately minus 80 dB. Minus 80 dB, which is optimum to uh, signal receiving from the uh, we get for the far away or for the dB signal interesting for the hour receiver. Minus 80 dB, which is optimum to minimum signal receiving from the so that this is the kit of the Arduino, a simple one. We are make a connection for the digital variable attenuator. We are selected for bit because it's already so this is the kit of the Arduino, a simple one. We are to make a connection. Uh, already we are choosing that DVB, uh, DVA with the four bit controller. That means we have uh, 32 steps only to control that one. So uh, also we have. We are choosing another pin for the control single pole, single through RF switch, and we are measure the video signal through the analog port. Also, we have to mention about we are using that C++ programming to setting and uh, uh, setting and uh, running the programming. So we are uh, make the programming like this uh, flowchart which is the initialization to define that the port at the first, then uh, measuring the video signals, and we can change it. This will be wrong. One must be low. Uh, so we can change it, switch off the RF path, or run return back after delay, or can be setting attenuator according to the input signal level with consideration 
our gain level, gain net level. Uh, the test was done by a synthesizer, super synthesizer, which is, can be generated any kind of RF signal, and uh, we tested the front end by measuring the spectrum and laser. We get that the input signal is variable, is a random signal, we are measuring. So we get the uh, output, which is range minus 10 to 17th. Uh, we can improve that one if we are selected, uh, digital variable attenuator, higher uh, bit or higher uh, pin input, or any f 2.4 we are used here, but if we are get uh, more details like a linear, can be get, uh, can be selected the variable attenuator, for example, as a control six bit controller. Uh, that's all. So it's an uh, optimum uh, solution for the, any variation in the input signal, any different signal. We can uh, keep the signal level by using the Arduino or the simple programming uh, to implement the next step with the receiver or the, the RF uh, front end is done. We have the next paper, inshallah, we talk about the receiver itself. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you for listening, no questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Shukran, uh, doctor. We have a question. Yes, doctor. Hello. Uh, did you, uh, you have used the prefer for limiting the run? Yes. The filter yes. was high order, yes. like nine, uh, eight, yes. uh, nine, uh, nine uh, order. So it's already done by the... Uh, I, uh, yes. Uh, did you try to use another filter after the mixer? Sharp filter. This is the, and this, uh, that will be uh, uh, get a problem only that if you get six giga yeah. with the high power, it's going to appear in the inter, uh, IF uh, stage yeah. because that intermodulation. We get that false alarm. We say that this is false alarm. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next paper. The title is Design and Imp Implementation of Micro Strip Directional Coupler for Satellite Communication Application. Uh, this will be presented by Mr. Piraz Ahmed. He is in the Department of Communication and Computer Engineering in Jihan University. Market in Iraqi Space Research Center. They left to Dubai and worked as the general manager of the Ryan Engineering Company, then as the consultant for the satellite and space technology in the Lutat Technical Center. And after that, I'm here now in Jihan University. Um, the design, design and implementation, uh, micro directional coupler for satellite communication application. Uh, here, or this paper, uh, proposes really to design the uh, directional coupler by microstrip uh, technology with uh, minus 10 dB, the uh, uh, coupling factor. And uh, the, we use it with the center frequency is 2.25 uh, gigahertz. Um, then Really, after that, when we take all of the uh, calculation for the equations uh, as a representation, then we designed by the software. Why? Because we need the optimization case. After that, we implemented this uh, device, and we make the uh, practical measurement by spectrum and network analyzer. Then we make the comparison between uh, two uh, measurements between I meaning uh, the software and uh, uh, the practical uh, measurement and we find the closed in the results and that's I think good here really uh, I go with uh, 
the calculation by equations, and this is very important. Now, sometimes there is many students, uh, researchers directly go with the software. Yes, the software is the tools, but really we should know about all of the calculations the, by the equations. And here I take it two methods or techniques. Uh, the first one by Akhtarzad, Rowe, and Jones uh, for the accuracy, uh, then uh, the Bryant and Weiss for the directivity, really. Uh, this is very important. Why? Because we take in our representation the shape ratio and the space ratio, W over H and S over H. This is really very important. Why? Because it will affect on the directivity of directional coupler. And the directivity of the directional coupler is the quality factor of the directional coupler. Here we use it, really, um, the substrate in the practical with the epsilon r, the permittivity three. This is the Rogers uh, three, and the height of the substrate was 1.52 uh, millim. So let's go now to know about the characteristic impedance for odd mode and even mode. And then we'll take uh, the single odd mode and even uh, mode. The important parameters we know about the coupler, any di directional coupler, coupling factor, isolation, transmission factor, directivity, and it's very important to know about the difference phase velocity. Then the important specification for the coupler, the coupling factor, again, in mid-band, and uh, the permittivity, epsilon r, here we take it the three, and the thickness of the substrate of the board, uh, 1.52 millim. Then the characteristic impedance, Z uh, naught, it's actually uh, 50 ohm. Then the bandwidth and the center frequency, low acceptable directivity, D. That's what I was talking about for the shape and space ratio. Then the tolerance uh, uh, coupling factor over the midband. From all of these informations, should be the designer uh, care about the widths of the micro strip lines because we'll just affect the, on the uh, impedance and the separation between the coupling lines, coupled region length, and subtraction laws as the function of the VSWR, and we will see that practically. And then uh, the values of odd and even modes, characteristic impedance by calculations. And then the return loss the finding, uh, maybe by uh, equations, figures, and table. And then the final synthesis, the problem is identical to that a couple. So here, about this table, you can see uh, the PSWR and return loss in the DB. And we will have it this actually by the practical measurement. Here will be, I take it, the 1.1, the VSWR. So uh, the return loss will be 26.444. We have it practically. And we have uh, another the table about the VSWR with the return loss and other, other main uh, uh, parameters. The design calculation for minus 10 dB coupling factor. We take it the coupling factor should be 10 dB and the uh, single microstrip feed characteristic impedance, Z0 will be 50 ohm, uh, substrate permittivity, epsilon R3, and the height of the substrate will be here 1.52 millim. The system center frequency for 2.25 gigahertz. This is the calculation, really, very important about the characteristic impedance for odd uh, and even mode. Here, the Z0, called Z0 for uh, odd, I mean Z0 odd, characteristic impedance for odd mode. So equal Z0 square root of 1 minus 10 to power uh, coupling factor, minus 10 dB, over 20 of 1 plus 10 to power coupling factor over 20. So equal 36 ohm. And for even mode, characteristic impedance, ZOE, equals z naught square root of 1 plus 10 to the power 
coupling factor over 20 and over 1 minus 10 to the power coupling factor, meaning minus 10 dB over 20. So we have it here. We have it 69.37 ohm. So from all of that, the characteristic impedance Z0 will be here equal from the equation number 3, 49.973 ohm, this is by calculation, and equal uh, approximately 50 ohm. So to calculate the single strip uh, characteristic impedance, Z of S, O meaning the uh, single odd, and this is very important about the directivity, equal Z0 uh, over 2 and equal 18 ohm, and for the uh, single uh, even mode will be uh, 34.7 and approximately 35 ohm. The calculation for the shape ratio, W over H, and the space ratio here, G, of course, equal 1.03, where S equal 0.24, H 1.25, and the D will have it here from equation 7, uh, 275.6. From all of that, if we need to find the equation, the equation 8, uh, the uh, shape ratio omega over uh, H for S mode, the single S mode, I've just applied the equation number 8, so we'll have it 8.64. And again, about the even mode, if we applied the 9, so we have it 4. Then the last things about the spacing ratio equal 0.149. Now, this is the calculation. So, if we go directly now, because we don't have time, sorry, uh, about the software, this is, I use it the Genesis software by Eagleware Company to design. So this is the schematic and the layout directional coupler. So uh, we have this one, the simulation results, the VSWR for all the ports. We have it equal uh, point, uh, 1.094 for the mid mod, I mean 2.25 gigahertz. And then the coupling factor here will be uh, minus uh, 10.012. This is by the simulator, and we will compare with the what? With the practical. Then about the input impedance here, equal uh, 51.8. And after that, the isolation between all the ports, that this is very important, we can see here. So after that, the characteristic impedance by uh, the Smith chart, we can see here for all the ports, uh, like uh, ideally, all equal 51.8 uh, minus uh, J4.18, is ideally. We will see when we compare with the, uh, the practical. After that, we uh, implemented uh, our device. This is the directional coupler here, the picture. Then uh, we make the measurement, practical measurement, by using uh, spectral network analyzer, 5, uh, 8510A. So this is the practical uh, measurement. We could hear about the for uh, one VSWRB 1.1, and about the uh, Z characteristic impedance for the first port, uh, 47 point something, and for all of the, uh, the ports. I have the time? Just one? OK. Uh, okay. So for uh, uh, another port, port 3, 4, and all of the, the ports. So we can see here, after that, um, this is the comparison between the software and the practical measurement. This is very important. You see here about the parameters like VSWR. We can see here, it's, look at here, really it's ideal, all the same, ideal. But about this one, this is the practical. But it's reasonable, and we can acceptable this one. Why? Because all of the VSWR for, uh, for the ports, 1.1, it's acceptable. And the coupling factor in the software, we have it minus 10 dB point, here is 0, 1, 2, okay? But about the practical, minus 10.4, it's acceptable. Why? Because it's not more than 10%.
If more than that happens, we have the problem. That means there is no coupling. But here we have the coupling. And after that, the input input impedance, uh, 50.8, here is uh, 47.03, it's okay. The isolation port, it's uh, closed. And about the characteristic impedance for all of the ports, we can see here the software and the, the hardware is near. That's meaning it's the close. It's very important, again, to take in your representation. When you design the directional coupler, the shape ratio and space ratio. Why? Because it will affect on the directivity of the directional coupler. And directivity of the directional coupler is the quality factor of any coupler. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Any question, please? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, from your presentation, can we conclude that we can, because these measurements are uh, very costly, is it possible to make all these uh, measurements by, the software. by software? Yes, we can, because I make the measurement. Now here, this is my measurement by the software, and this is by the practical, really, actually. Yes, we can do it. Yeah, because this will save a lot of money and time. Yeah, yeah so special it's very about important. Yeah. Such a, yeah. This is a very good conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you Thank very you much. Very Thanks, Thanks a lot. lot. Thank you. Yes. Dr. Amor, yes. Please, uh, uh, doctor, uh, your name? And yes, my name is Omar Ramahi. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, my question, uh, lately I've been seeing designing uh, the uh, uh, paradigms, uh, the, the spot, my wild optimization techniques and the results seem to be very good without without knowledge of the analytical physical background you want to comment on this yes you know Dr. thank you very much about this question i think before three years ago uh, when you give the presentation here i discussed with you some about something uh, even now there are some students my students with you here what i told my students with the first lecture, engineering equal mathematics plus physics. That's right. The mathematics is our father. Math, uh, physics, our mother. So the physics just explain what the theory it's work. But how can I prove that? By mathematics. That's right. Even by me, I go directly to optimization, I said, with, with the software. So optimization case. But actually, when I implemented my device, I will go with some things. And I think Dr. Hisham and, and even you and some people here have good experience with the practical. Now my device, it's very good about the measurement. But and another device is very good. But when I just connected, if I didn't take all of these uh, uh, results in my representation, when just connected all, all as the subsystem, all the subsystem, subsystem with the sub, just one system. We have the bigger problem about the figure of merit, G over T. Yes, because I worked it before and I have good experience in this. Thank you, Dr. Omar. This is a very good question. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker, a title, Pace Spoofing detection and authentication using linear binary patterns um, by, I think, because not well uh, uh, registered here, by Dr. Mustafa Zuhair Naif at the bar. Okay. Mustafa Zuhair Naif at the bar. Can't start.
you know, fate detection and authentication has become an active field of research material in the recent year, exactly after coronavirus has become very trendy. Due to an agreed use of base dependent fate access control system. This system, we can consider it as better from another system as fingerprint because, in fact, this system is easily accessible. This is non intrusive nature and also it makes it very easy to, the, to attack or to contact between the user and the device. Without, there is no direct attack between the person and the device. Therefore, exactly ongoing pandemic here, COVID 19. Therefore, this system becomes very famous. And it's now used for the airport and in any location. For all this, this system has, without does come without security risk. Related to that, some attacker, he would like to attack the system, seeking to gain unauthorized access to the system. One of this problem is spoofing, face spoofing. What is this? In the security breach attempt that happened when anyone attack or try to divide the face enable access control system. How? Everyone now, face recognition system based on the camera, anyone, stand up in front of the camera and take photo for it. There is camera and take stream video and if when the device detected his face, he sent it to the number of process to recognize this person inside the database or not. Some of this a problem we can attacker can use it can introduce face photo I can take fa photo for another any person inside the database and what I do I put it inside the camera or can I display video instead of the camera or I work the mask of an authorized person this is the main problem for this system in addition to in this uh, proposal, we will introduce paper. We suggested some of the methods. This method is used some of the five most feature extraction and classification methods. Our system started with the phase detection. Everyone know we started with the video stream, the camera take video stream, and it work continue continuously and take every time video. And he waited till he detected any phase. In this stage, we use Viola Joint Detection System. This system, or this detection system, this detection algorithm, <coughs> it used posted cases, uh, cascade algorithm. This is what it, we have based on the weak classifier. We compare together to create a strong classifier. This is introduced in 2009. Then we come to the pre-processing. Everyone now. There is no, we, we work un, under uncontrolled condition. The light here is high, in another place is low. Maybe we don't have light, we have so light according to the weather. Therefore, we needed this stage. In this stage, we aim, use gamma correction, we, use, we aim to enhance the image by limiting the overall brightness of the image by predefined range. We determine the range, and what we do? We make all the images that enter to this system in this range. This is the important stage is feature extraction. We use texture feature. In fact, we compare between two methods, local binary pattern and Gabor filter, Gabor feature. Local binary pattern is very famous operator or method, feature extraction method, introduced in 2002, and there is many update for it. We have local ternary pattern, local directionary pattern, local directionary ternary pattern, and we have many. This is, and have in this local binary pattern, what we have, we have kernel. As example, we have a three, multiply three, or five, multiply five, according to the radius we would like. This kernel scan all the image, and he find the relation between any pixel and its neighborhood. And according to this relation, he will create a pattern. And in fact, our image is color. We have a three channel, red, green, and blue. We apply this method to, to get feature from every channel. We take it feature from uh, red, exactly uh, 59 feature, and from green, 59, blue, 59. 
In total, in local binary pattern, we take it 177. Then we come to another double filter. This, in fact, this filter is calculated based at a result of uh, such a pentomeral uh, filter bank. It aims to find the energy value for, for the pixel in the image. Then it calculated this and introduced vector, feature vector. From Gabor filter, we have a 2040 feature. Then we compare between all of them. Then we'll enter to the classification. In the classification, we use support vector machine. This is supervised machine learning method. It's very famous and it is used exactly. It's very good for a small database. This algorithm, in fact, he wait to separate it between two class and find the maximum hyper plan between two class. Here we use binary classification. This means we have one, zero. We don't use for multiple classification. We have two stage. First stage for spoofing. The image will take it. Then after analysis, pre-processing, and I take it the feature from it. I aim to what? To find this image is spoofing or not. If this image is spoofing, what happened? Directly I reject. If not, I enter to the second stage from the classification. This authentication, I would define this person inside the database or not. To test our system, in fact, we use database. We created this database. This content of 60 image. We have 60 person, 10 image for everyone. And we have 30 image for the uh, training, 30 for classification. And for evaluation, we use this parameter, half total error rate, and we have false accepted rate and false rejection rate. And we found it in spoofing, a high total error rate is 0 0.1, is good rate, and in authentication, we have 0 0.2. Thank you for listening, and I am ready for any question. Dr. Mustafa, uh, if there is any question, please. Any question? Yes. Thank you for your uh, presentation. I'm uh, Khaled from the University of Houston in the UK. So uh, have you considered any type of coding? Coding technique? Any? Any recording technique? I don't understand your question. What the meaning of image coding? Um, oh, oh, okay. You need the formatting of the image. Yes, yes. In fact, we, we, in fact, we, we based on the video stream, and after take it to JPG, we take it. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other question, please? Okay. Thank you, Doctor. You are welcome. speaker has a title, High Band Rejection Using Dual Mode uh, Ring Resonator to Create a Dual Band Bandpass Filter for 5G and Wireless Communication. And this will be by Amir Youssef. He's in Medical Instruments Technology Engineering Department of Mansour University College in Communication Engineering Department, University of Technology in Iraq. Okay. Hello, everyone. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Amir Bashir, Department Co uh, Coordinator in the Al Mansour University College. Uh, our paper, titled by High Band Rejection, using a dual mode ring resonator to create dual band bus filter for 5G and wireless application. In the beginning, we were talking about the introduction of 5G and band bus filter, then the problem statement and challenges. After that, the proposed solution and thesis objective. Then there is an, uh, a lot, uh, many uh, technologies that used 
in this design, uh, just like defected ground structure and pair taper with tapers. Then we will see the conclusion. In the beginning, the 5G new radio wireless communication require higher frequency and wider bandwidth. The frequency spectrum of uh, 5G example of it is working on sub-6 and 26 to 29 gigahertz and 36 to 39 gigahertz. 5G system in international mobile telecommunication requirements, it must be the bus band of 500 megahertz, low insertion loose, low radiation loose, high selectivity with high band rejection. The band bus filter works in a low the propagation of signal for particular range of frequencies, attenuating the signals that fall outside the bus band range. There is uh, many parameters uh, with the, the band bus filter, just like frequency of operation, bandwidth, insertion loose, return loose, rule of group delay, unloaded quality factor, and loaded quality factor. This is uh, the traditional behavior of the band bus uh, filter, and there is uh, many technologies uh, we can use to achieve the band bus filter. For example, waveguide, SIW, and the electric resonator, microstrip or strip line, and the last one is superconductor. In our design, we use the microstrip technology. The aim of our work is to achieve high selectivity and high band rejection. And this table is the specification of the proposed filter. We work on two frequency, center frequency. The first one is 2.1 gigahertz, and the other is 4.1 .1 gigahertz. The band rejection, we get high band rejection. We must get high band rejection, reach to 15 gigahertz for the two bands, and the fractional bandwidth must be 12% and 7.6% for the first and the second pass band. Uh, this this figure shows this uh, the this figure shows the two frequencies, the two center frequencies with the theoretical result. The first one is about 2.17, and the, the second is 4.17 gigahertz. At the first, we desired uh, the coupling matrix element. This uh, table, the conclusion values and coupling matrix for the proposed filter. We can extract the G values and the coupling matrix then we get the physical dimensions by using even and odd analysis. This figure uh, shows the proposed design of the per per perturbation element and the frequency response of the proposed design. We can see that uh, the two bands of the uh, band bus filter have been appeared, but there is, uh, uh, there is uh, a high losses here the second harmonic have been appeared at 7 gigahertz. So we must get rid of this harmonic. By using the defected ground structure, DGS, it's work as a notch filter. We can uh, do it by etching the ground plane. So we can uh, minimize the losses here and get rid of the second harmonic. After that, we used two taper loaded on the coupled line here and that uh, make us to achieve a high band rejection reach to 15 gigahertz with four zeros. Four zeros, uh, we get four zeros, and that uh, make the, our filter is high selectivity. So the, our conclusion, 5G systems support more active users, significant amount of data rate, low latency. This paper proposed multi-band fil bus filter cancel out second and third harmonics, so it's high band rejection. And last addition of four uh, transmission zero, that means our filter is good selectivity. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any question, please? Any question? Thank you for your representation. Thank you for, for your presentation. Uh, well, in the is for to do this 
uh, filter for 5G applications. Yes. But you now wo work on the 3G band. Uh, it's it's uh, not for only 5G. The first band 2.17 is for 5G ap uh, application, and the other is uh, in uh, wireless application. It's for wireless application. The f the second band is for wireless application, yeah. but the first band is for 5G application. In which frequency? Uh, it's uh, it's 2.17 gigahertz. In the 2020 year, uh, it's used in uh, I think uh, in Europe. Yeah, the, fir the first one. The for five G, which in which band? Four point one gigahertz. Yeah. It's for mobile application. The second one is not for five G, but the first one is for five G application. Point. Four point one is not for five G application. But the first one is uh, it's 2.17 gigahertz. It's for 5G application. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Okay, <coughs> when uh, we work on higher frequency, that means uh, the design uh, will be more compact and uh, small size. Uh, so in Iraq here, uh, we don't have a CNC machine or chemical uh, way to achieve the, that uh, filter. So I think uh, the first, uh, uh, the best way, uh, I think it's used multi-layer to get rid of the minimum uh, spacing between uh, each line uh, or uh, using the defected ground structure to make the design more compact and get rid of this problem. <laughs> uh, but is uh, not required our limitation. Okay, any other question please? Thank you, Mr. Amir. Next speaker. The title is Planet Drones Data Applications Mob uh, Mobility Models and Wi Fi IEEE 802.11N Standards for Real and Non Real Time Traffic. And this will be by, presented by Mr. Ghassan, and he is in Jihan University in the Department of Communication and Computer Engineering. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Doctor. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my paper will be about flight drones and how to uh, measure the videos between uh, traffic, sorry, between the drones while they are moving in different situations. Okay, a small uh, information about me. I'm Mr. Hassan from the Communication Department, Jihan University. I graduated from EMU in uh, Cyprus, and my specialty is that the communication, uh, uh, Wi-Fi, and cybersecurity. <coughs> As we can see here, one of the main uh, evolution of word is called FANETS, drones. Drones mean a, a group of mobile nodes that moving together while they are transferring video audio or capture sound or capture thermal images okay the main problem and the question how they can transfer their information between between them to the final receiver okay as you saw from previous pl uh, presentations of our, our colleagues today they all worked with how to enhance the image standards the transfer uh, of the antenna but also no one talked about what is kind of routing protocols can be used to send and receive information between the drones one of the main problems to connect different users or nodes is how they can communicate okay if I have an antenna like 5G antenna or 6G antenna or 4G antenna, I cannot send and receive without any protocol. This is the main problem. 
So our work today is talking about how we will measure these kind of protocols and what is the throughput and delay for each one. As we can see here, there are different kind and type for minutes, such as fanet, manet, vanet. They are all a group of uh, not non-localized networks. So they don't use a fixed infrastructure while they send and receive information. Okay? So our paper was about to measure the mobility models, IEEE Wi-Fi standards, and also routing protocols. As we can see from here, the mobility model of these drones, where they are flying, they should be in different shapes, okay? And there are many type of mobility models, but we took the main two famous types. The one of them is called random waypoint. Random waypoint means the nodes are moving in random positions. One of the main uh, search and rescue teams, when they are working in an area to measure the information, they send the drones to fly in different freedom area, which is called uh, random waypoint mobility. While if I am searching for a specific target, I will use gas Markov mobility model, which is mean I can enter the coordinates depending on X and Y situations. When, I'm want to, when I want to send and receive information between the sender and receiver, okay, between the sender and receiver, there are different channels to send. If I use the same channel for transmission, I will have a problem of interference. As we all know, there are two types of channels nowadays, IEEE uh, 2.4 gigahertz for Wi-Fi and 5 gigahertz. And now they are using the 6 gigahertz AX. But in general, there are different uh, statistics between 2.5, uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. One of them that 5 gigahertz can uh, give higher speed information, while 2.4 gigahertz can give lower speed but longer range. Also, there are different type of routing protocols that we are talking about. Routing protocols mean that they can help the data to be transferred between user to user or point to point. There are different types, as we can see from here, there's the proactive type, reactive type, and the hybrid type. We took also the famous ones from proactive and reactive to send the data between the nodes. The network traffic that was sent was two types. One of the types was video traffic, which is called real-time information. Real-time information is very important to decrease the delay while sending the information between the sender and the receiver while the second one was normal non-real-time traffic. Normal non-real-time traffic mean that I will send data, but it can cause delay, no problem, while I will guarantee of receiving information. This is the uh, analyzed trans parameters for my, our work. We use a, a, packet, uh, a program called Obnet for network analysis. This program is used to analyze the data between the nodes. And also we use 2,000 by 2,000 meter square area while we send video, voice, HTTP, and FTP. We use 25 drones that flying in two type of uh, mobility models that I explained before. And the simulation time was for five minutes while recording the data. As we can see from here, in real time traffic has uh, lower throughput while in real time traffic has higher throughput as the different type of protocols such as channels such as 5 gigahertz can give higher speed but low coverage range if the nodes are moving in very far between them the 5 gigahertz cannot achieve higher throughput while we can see here from the delay that again for 5 gigahertz in mobility models waypoint random it can cause higher delay as the transmission for the nodes will be cut it off because the transmission range is very low in 5 gigahertz. And then again, in conclusion, we can see that if I'm using too many mobility models for nodes, the nodes should be very close to each other. If the nodes are very far to each other, the data traffic will be very low. And if you can see also in uh, Christmas before, uh, Hong Kong or China, they use a lot of drones to draw a big, a big pictures in the sky. The drones was very close to each other. 
If they become very far, the cutting between the data will be cut it off and disconnected, and this is the main problem. Thank you very much for the presentation. If you have any questions, I will be glad to answer. Yes, my head of department, Mr. Adil. Anything you will say is true. Thank you, uh, thank you for good the presentation and trust already. Uh, I think there is a, a lot of uh, theory on the network can be used, the Kessler, uh, like the Bluetooth, one can be later and the others we sleep. So can we use the same principle here? Actually, uh, the main uh, advantage of using uh, drones is that we can control them in far distance. A Bluetooth, unfortunately, until now, they don't cover very, very far distance. And also the speed is between not them, required. Between them only, between them. Between them, also the distance between the distance them will be very small. can be small. reached 200 meters for the Bluetooth. Yes, but the speed rate yes. of the Bluetooth is very low than the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz right. bandwidth. So actually, now they are using the 6 uh, channel, 6 gigahertz bandwidth, which is IX, which is better. But um, some drones, which is very small, can use Bluetooth also. Yes, thank you very much thank for the question. You. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Khalid. My old friend, thank you. Thank, thank you for your presentation. Most welcome. Uh, if signaling is concerned, so can we cons you consider using the OFDM? OFDM for channel OFDM actually is a very uh, an old technique of transmission. Yeah, it, is, it is used, actually. Or Gotham, right? Yes, uh, because uh, as long as you got many drones, or if you have like a you know, station and you are uh, 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 considering the old DM, then with the antenna and the special uh, beam forming, then you can have a better control on your drones. One of the main problems in drones is the energy saving. Yeah. They, when they use 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, they want to decrease the power consumption. OFDM takes too much power consumption as the peak point of signaling between the nodes will be very high, which will consume more power. This is the main problem. Other problems also can be used if the drone data rate was very low for OFDM. Okay. They cannot uh, capture 4K videos and transfer it between them. Okay, I've been in one of the uh, events and I've seen that uh, similar to this scenario, a drone was used as a base station using or while they controlling the other drones. So all of them they are planned. And they are uh, uh, monitored and controlled from like uh, the, the ground station. So something uh, impressive, but uh, if you see that the whole thing is while uh, in the sky. As I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, this scenario is in infrastructure, non-infrastructure scenario. The, if one of the drones was a base station that will, uh, let's say, cover and communicate with all of them, if it has any problem, all the information between them will be cut off. My scenario is they are con communicating between each other even if one of them or two of them was dropped down. Okay. Okay? okay. So we cannot put a very high backbone drone on others. So if we do this, it will be infrastructure, not less. Yeah, yeah. Fixed infrastructure. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Most welcome. Thank you for yes. your question. Any other questions? Yes, my friend. I'm very patient. We have, I think, one hour, Dr. Hijam. My place. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. of time, I'll try to make it brief. Uh, are you planning to test whether it works, how it works? Testing? You mean a real test? I saw a video like, uh, let's say, two days ago about some guy who brought uh, drones and he connected the drones to uh, mobiles, 5G mobiles, and he fly them away. The cost of this scenario was more than $20,000. So we have okay. a problem in cost. That's that's number one. Okay, so I realize.
due Well, time. actually, as you know, all network performances analyzers have give 75 to 90 percent real time or let's say real actual results, but not 100 percent. Sure, of course. Yeah. Okay, okay, but but from my understanding, there's a severe problem when it comes to drones of interference. I keep hearing a lot of, about this. Yes. Interference, is it, is it, do you find this a potential problem? Interference from outside sources. Well, actually, uh, most, most drones now, they are communicating using codes, okay? If you use codes between each drone, you can lock the code on different channels, so the interference will be very low. But if you fly uh, different type of uh, drones in the same area without monitoring the channels, you will have high interference and maybe two, three drones will be uh, respond to the same instruction and they will crash away. Okay, thank you. Thank you much for coming. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Sham. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, next paper will be Uh, influence of antenna beam width on observed characteristics of uh, uh, of an outdoor vehicle vehicular channel. Uh, this will be uh, the speaker will be Dr. Khalid Al Malak. Uh, he's in communication system and network in communication University of Bristol, United Kingdom. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this. Uh, uh, interested uh, present uh, or conference. Uh, I was uh, one of the lecture assistant here in back in 2014, and uh, I like to uh, contribute to such uh, research and uh, academic uh, uh, yeah uh, contribution. So today I am going to talk about uh, one of the. Uh, practical work done uh, at the University of Bristol, which is, uh, it was a collaborated work between those uh, uh, industries, like the National Physical Laboratory, uh, Nuki Wave, and the Keysight Technologies. So, let me just get this one. Well, I guess I press the... Hmm? Here we are. So uh, the overview of my uh, presentation will be, uh, I'm talking about the motivation of doing this research, the objective, uh, the measurement setup, uh, post-processing of the data, results achieved, conclusion and recommendation. So what is the motivation of doing this one? So we got a millimeter wave frequency, we have like the high data rate and uh, uh, low latency. So this is uh, a key performance uh, parameter uh, mentioned by other uh, researchers and uh, uh, it is interested for different uh, applications while my interested research is uh, vehicular uh, applications, right? So as we see in these diagrams, so how the uh, uh, frequencies and uh, the expected uh, bandwidth uh, for different uh, range of uh, frequencies starting from the lowest one up to uh, the uh, 100 gigahertz, for example. So that's one motivation and, uh, and the other motivation. So if we consider that uh, beam uh, or uh, the phase array antenna, so the beam width has a great influence with the uh, 5G. So uh, that's why uh, we have to uh, always uh, work out how the influence of beam width is uh, uh, working with any research related with the 5G. Okay, I think the battery is not working well. So we got also in uh, vehicular application the Doppler shift and Doppler spread, which are uh, the, uh, parameters characterizing uh, vehicular communication. And uh, also uh, there, uh, there is like the attenuation we have in, in vehicular communication a lot of attenuation. So in this research, uh, I'm going to explore some of these, uh, which uh, I've already seen from the practical work. So the objective then is to characterize the influence of antennas beam width when uh, uh, we have like a realistic vehicular channel 
and uh, the other objective is study the line of sight and non line of sight environment for vehicle to infrastructure V2I communication. Okay? So study the attenuation when there is a vehicle obscuring the line of sight between the base station and uh, the receiver uh, antenna. So measurement setup. Test location. So I chose a test location belongs to the University of Bristol. And uh, as you see here, the, a snapshot from a Google map. There are two uh, locations. I hope that's clear for it, the audience. And here are some photos uh, made, live photos made uh, whilst uh, performing the measurement. So the transmitter antenna was on the height of two meters. I used the 26 gigahertz uh, uh, phase array antenna from a Nuki wave, which it has uh, horizontal polarization and uh, some characteristics of this uh, antenna uh, are showing here in the table. Because of the phase antenna and the, 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 uh, the, the power of the antenna, we have to use like an execution uh, distance uh, between uh, the antenna and any uh, person uh, approaches. So there is a three meters for the safety, okay? So that is essential when we handle with, the, uh, with such high power uh, phase array antenna, okay? So this uh, uh, phase array antenna can produce different uh, uh, high power beam width. So I consider the 17 degree and the 20 degree uh, half hour beam width, okay? Okay, the receiver antenna is 1.87 uh, meter. It was mounted on a top uh, of a vehicle, and uh, uh, it was a horn antenna, uh, 23 uh, dBi, and that uh, the horn antenna can uh, or can use a beam width between 17 and 25 uh, degree. I traveled a distance of 150 meter in that uh, park space. The speed was restricted because uh, it was uh, like a university uh, area, and uh, uh, there we have to very we have to limit ourselves with the uh, 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 speed uh, available there. So I used the University of Bristol 